I'm Troy Kirby with MLT News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. The House debated Substitute House Bill 1225, which establishes a school-based health center program office within the Department of Health. The bill passed the House 6036, moving on to the Senate for consideration. And this legislation brings forward three elements that are critical to the behavioral health needs of our youth. First, Madam Speaker, is the partner access line for moms. This has been a pilot program and this legislation makes this a permanent program. The second thing this line does is makes permanent the mental health referral assist line for our teens. The last thing that this legislation does is really move forward a a piece of um, behavioral health work that we need to do for our youngest, our youngest, our zero to five age group. Um, I I will say that there is some concerns on our side about uh, doing completely from zero to five. It would have been, you know, uh, some some folks on our side would have preferred to have it two to five. Um, But uh, I think that overall that this is great policy and um, I urge your support. Thank you. I am on a second on this with the good lady from uh, District 5, and um, I too have had questions about it, but I keep reverting back to a history in my life, uh, a three-year-old that came to live with me, and um, it was our chance to be able to adopt a little girl that had come from um, some pretty bad background. And when I would find her almost daily crying in the closet, in a little ball, if I'd had a line to call, somebody to call to start questioning this behavior, that could have saved this little girl's life. I agree. The the, uh, the power line is great. I am just uh, I'm very very excited and elated that, uh, that it's going to become permanent because it has done a lot of good things for a lot of our families, and I uh, I appreciate that. Uh, but I'm one of those that, that had some concerns about uh, this birth to five assessments. Uh, a little bit concerned, and that uh, wasn't so much concern in the beginning because um, I signed on to the bill and I, and I knew what it did. But as I received feedback from different um, folks from around the state. Uh, and as a ranking member on this committee, it seemed like I get uh, most of the negative emails, but uh, I did read them and took my time to read them. And uh, so I'm a little concerned that uh, we went from birth to five, that we didn't go from two to five. Uh, that's probably my only concern with the bill. Lawmakers also debated Substitute House Bill 1348, which focuses on medical assistance provided to incarcerated individuals. The bill passed the House 97-0, moving on to the Senate for consideration. This bill will facilitate immediate access to medical care, including behavioral health treatment and prescription medications for folks who are serving less than 30 days in jail, which is about 90% of our jail population in the state. It also saves money for counties and cities that operate local correctional facilities because they can actually bill Medicaid instead of bearing the cost for any medical care that's delivered outside of the correctional facility, such as emergency department visits. This will require a waiver from CMS, and I know that they are actively working on that. I sure hope we get the waiver because it would sure help these folks coming out uh, from incarceration, get them the things that they need immediately no gap. They get this, you know, their medications right away. And and it does have a benefit to the the people, uh, the cities and the counties. This is a good bill. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by MLT News, covering the 2021 legislative session.